think that um, it, my books saturate you in the experience uh, when, you're, when you're reading them, when you're delving into them. And so um, today I'm gonna read a bit of my, my latest lesbian erotic novel, Dangerous Pleasures. And that one is about two best friends, one queer, lesbian, and one straight. And um, their lives run parallel um, for a while. But there's um, a kidnapping, there's a murder, there's um, uh, all kinds of drama and things. And the real question throughout the book is, because it, ultimately it is a lesbian romance, will the straight woman and the lesbian end up together as a couple? And so this is Dangerous Pleasures, and I'm gonna try to do this mic and book thing, but it's gonna be hard. <laughs> Hold on. So my two characters are Mason and Renee. And the section I'm gonna read for you, the first one is um, Mason is encountering a stranger. She lives in San Diego and she is, she meets someone and is going to have a casual yet fun encounter with that person. Dangerous pleasures. The dress was beautifully easy. Ooh, sorry. What happened to me? <laughs> Oh. Is that too loud? No, 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 fine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I touched the wrong button. You touched the wrong button. Da, 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 da. Okay. All right. The dress was beautifully easy to take off. With one tug, the string loosened, and Mason unwrapped the body that had been promised to her. Fatima's pleasure rumbled deep in her throat and Mason's appreciative and hungry look. The last time she had a woman in her house intent on sex, Nuria had backed her against the door as soon as they walked in and demanded that Mason fuck her. It had been her pleasure to take the reins then, lifting Nuria against the door, tearing her panties away from her already wet and welcoming pussy and sliding her fingers home. But that, that was another time she and Fatima came together, mouths, bellies, hands on skin. Through her clothes, she could feel the other woman's heat, her hard nipples, the skin damp and ready for tasting. Fuck me, Fatima hissed in her ear. Well, perhaps that time and this one weren't that different after all. She licked the soft, salty throat, gripping a fleshy hip while her fingers delved into the dense hairs to find the slick pussy. Two fingers. They both gasped and Fatima fanned her legs wider against the back of the sofa, arms braced as Mason fucked her slowly, relishing the pleasure of her pussy and the soft sighing moans and the hips rushing up to meet her fingers. Her nipples were fat and eager for Mason's mouth she groaned into the abundant flesh, licking and sucking at the stiff nipples, fingers working, curving up, sliding deep, exploring and taking. With one hand, she abruptly lifted Fatima until she sat on the back of the heavy couch, legs spread, her gasp of surprise turning to a groan of pleasure when Mason slid her fingers deeper. Her head fell back, hips, diving up for Mason's seeking fingers, her head thrown back to release a continuous chorus of moans. Yes, yes. She thrust up against Mason's fingers, the juice from her slick and plentiful. Her nakedness in Mason's clothed body, the rising heat in the room, the leap of breasts with each movement of Mason's fingers. Mason. Fatima gripped her arm, fingers sinking into skin. That pain joined the nearly unbearable fullness between Mason's thighs, her body swollen, molten from the noises the woman made. Fatima threw her head back, screaming. She clutched and spasmed around Mason's fingers. Thick juice rushed down. Fatima's breathing was loud in the room. That was perfect. She laughed into Mason's neck. The soft breath 
fanned against her sensitive skin, sending goosebumps dancing down her chest. She pulled Fatima from the back of the sofa, away and from the living room, and up the stairs. We're not done yet. Oh, and that was a, <laughs> that was a section. <laughs> How much time do I have? I have four more minutes? Okay. Well, I will do another section that's less sex and more plot. I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, <laughs> so here is a section where Mason and uh, Renee are going surfing. They're in San Diego. It happens. They ate breakfast and then set off for Mission Beach, with the stereo blasting the scatter lights and Mason's surfboard sticking up for the back of the convertible. At 9 a.m. on a Saturday morning, the beach was still half asleep, with only a few cars cruising down Mission Boulevard. A man walking his two dogs crossed the street against the light. The dogs, tethered or untethered by leashes, danced around the man's intricately tattooed legs, nipping playfully at each other as they ran ahead of their human, then back to him. See if you can park by the lifeguard station, Renee said. I do not want to get stuck carrying your, surf your surfboard like last time. Oh, you can carry the hamper instead. Are you joking? That shit's heavy too. Oh, you wuss. The closer they got to the water, the more sand covered the road, crunching under the tires and floating up around the car in a pale cloud. Mason parked against the curb between a yellow Volkswagen bus VW bus, I should say, and an old blue Volvo station wagon. Out on the ocean, the waves were high, foam topped, and a sharp blue in the morning sun. A few surfers were already riding high on the water, gliding across the surface like sea bound birds, their arms outstretched. They unpacked their gear. Renee set herself up on her blanket with sunscreen all over her body and her camera nearby, while Renee, while Mason pulled on her wetsuit and plunged into the water with her surfboard. The water was cold. Renee could tell by the single sinuous shiver that took Mason's body as she rode into the ocean on her belly, a dark slash of yellow against, or a dark slash against her pale yellow surfboard. A wave rose up and she did too leaping to her feet on the board and knifing into the thick trough of water. Leaping on top of the wave, then inside it. The wave curled around her body, hiding it from Renee's sight. Then the wave uncurled, revealing a grinning mason trailing her fingers against the water's glassy wall as she rode it down the beach. Her laughter rippled on the, bree on the breeze. Renee watched her mesmerized by her grace on the water, the strength in her tall body. Even when Mason fell, disappearing under thundering water, then reappearing again in her quest to conquer, she was beautiful. The camera fell into her hands and clicked steadily, capturing images of ocean, of woman, and sun. In the zoom lens, Mason's face was a portrait of untamed joy. That was, that was it. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was four minutes, but I figure, you know, I better wrap it up instead of going over. I have a moment. Uh, two more minutes. Oh, okay, groovy, I can do. Sort of sexy, but not really. Um, actually, it's kind of sexy, but. Um, so I'm wrapping this up. This is uh, a moment where Mason is in the grip of love with her lover, who will remain Mysterious to the reader until they, you know, read the book and, and find it out. Hopefully, you know, buy a few tonight, today, this afternoon. Um, so this is toward the end of Dangerous Pleasures, and Mason is in love and in lust. Mason gripped the ledge, lips parted, gasping helplessly, blind to anything outside the window, powerless to the hunger moving through her making her entire body wet. Sweat, come, tears, all sliding from her. The hot mouth covered her, agile tongue swirling through her folds, diving deep inside her. 
searing sensation twisted in her belly. Undone. She was completely undone, like the skin of a mango, slit open, turned inside out, sucked clean. That was that. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, that was um, Dangerous Pleasures.